Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video for Studio One version 5. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the great feature that has been introduced in an earlier version. Uh, it's called Audio Dropout Protection and Low Latency Monitoring. And um, this feature has been introduced in the previous version, but today working in Studio One 5.1, uh, we're going to see how that works um, in Studio One 5. Uh, of course, if you have a previous version, you can replicate the steps and you can, um, of course, implement uh, the dropout protection on a previous version as well. Um, that feature works, works great with any interface you might have, but today I'm going to show you how it works in my case, which I have um, a DSP interface from Personas called Studio 192. Um, and it has uh, an onboard DSP um, effects uh, for the reverbs and the delays. Um, so it works a bit different, uh, but not that different. So we can see how we can implement these uh, dropout protection uh, with or without the DSP interface. So you start your Studio One Professional and uh, you click the new song, uh, you go to an empty uh, song here, double click, and we click the plus button and we're gonna have here our mic and we're gonna um, just create one, one uh, track for today's uh, purposes. And um, I'm gonna open my uh, studio, my Personas Universal Control over here, and I chose the block size to be 64. Um, it's just, uh, I just need the lowest. For my case, 64 I think is okay for now. Um, and then, uh, while I'm having that here, I will uh, go to Studio One, go to Options, and then audio interface processing. As you see, 64 matches here. The block size matches the one that I chose in uh, the universal control a uh, few seconds uh, before. And then I'm gonna change the dropout protection. Um, as you see here, because I have a DSP interface called Studio 192 from Personas, my latency, if I here it says, hardware monitor available. So that means that the hardware latency protection is going, so the latency protection is going over the hardware DSP already. So if I change that to from the minimum protection to the low protection, you see that I have a few options here. So this is the blue sign is for the DSP interfaces from Presonus, okay? And then you have the option to go low and then enable these buttons. So the enable low latency monitoring for VIs, for virtual instruments or whatever. If you click on that, then that goes green. That's for you guys who don't have a DSP interface. And then if you click uh, use native low latency instead of hardware, so if, either for me, even, even for me, if I don't want to use my Studio 192 DSP controller, I can click that and the, and the blue will go green. And then you see what's going to happen. Boom. So the standard is 17.3 milliseconds roundup. And then the low latency goes back to 10. But this is with 128 samples. I've raised the samples because I've raised the protection. So my native, I, I think it's, it's a bit complicated how it looks, but we're going to see how it sounds like at the end. So my block size in the interface is 64, but I've raised the protection up to the 128. So it's double the block size, the original block size. Um, if I want to raise it just a bit higher, then I'm going to medium. You see here that the standard has has raised a bit, but the low latency has st stays the same. Okay, over the um, um, I think this the 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 processing engine should stay 64. We don't need to change that. Uh, but if we've raised the protection even higher, you see that the 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 monitor latencies stays the same. The protection stays. Sorry, the, 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 the latency rises, but the protection low latency stays the same. 
but let's see how that sounds in our case. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stay to low. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to open up my mixer. You see here the instrument, you can turn it on and off. If you apply any VSTs over here, you can turn it on and off. Um, and I'm going to create an FX channel, which I'm going to call it RVB from Reverb. Uh, I'm going to color it and I'm going to drop in the room reverb. So what's, what is happening here with all these settings? So for uh, the native low latency monitoring, okay, so if, allow me to go back for a second. So for the native, so if I, if I use native low latency monitoring for that setting, okay, everything, uh, all the plugins with three millisecond or less works perfectly fine, okay? Um, also the same thing works with the virtual instruments. So we need VIs and plugins with a three milliseconds or less. Everything else cannot work properly, according to the manual. Um, and also, as you see here, uh, what is very, very important is that the in the protection page and comparing that to the original block size, okay, the block size that I've set my my interface is lower than the protection so the protection has to be higher that's that's very important okay otherwise if they both match you see there's no protection there's nothing nada so in my case i go to back to the hardware version which is blue z okay but if i if i change that everything goes back to green which is the software the native low latency monitoring okay i'm going back to the uh, studio one's uh, internal um, dropout protection okay so the green is internal software soft one uh, software low latency protection and blue is the hardware dsp one for those that they do have a dsp studio 192 interface um, okay without further ado I'm going to assign, so here is my um, mic and I'm going to assign that mic to, so it's already been assigned here, I'm going to press play, monitor and uh, there is a delay, slight delay, but if um, uh, I just want to assign the insert, one, I, I, I. I, I, so you can you can listen. I think with these um, with these settings that there was a slight delay over here, just a tiny bit. Let's turn it a bit down. I think also you need to find a sweet spot. We'll stick it to low. Click OK. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. I uh, think that's it. Here, the, everything works fine with these hittings. One, two, three, four, five. Test, test, test. We're testing the dropout protection, low latency monitoring. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Boom. All right, so it works great. Now let's go back to the room reverb. And this is the large hall. Let's go into a cathedral, which I really like. Uh, yeah, enable that. Uh, 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 oh, oh, oh. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, so this is it. So basically you set up an effects and you assign that to the send. You send your mic to. If you send your mic to the reverb, so basically you can record yourself. Let's record that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. This is a mic test. This is a 
an effects sent test without recording the reverb, just listening to it. I'm inside the cathedral at the moment, uh, enjoying the reverb. Okay, enough with that. So let's listen. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. This is a mic test. This is a an effects sent test without recording the reverb, just listening to it. You see, no reverb, no cathedral has been recorded, although we can listen to it again. So if I send my recording to the reverb, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. This is a mic test. This is a, f you see, that's how it works. So basically, I really like it. So let's do another test. If I close everything and go back to blue and minimum, if I go back to blue, this is the hardware uh, monitoring, um, how everything sounds like. Let's do, let's remove that. And hello, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's bring it back and do another test. You see what I did there, yeah? So very easy, you just create another truck by drag and drop to an empty space and instantly creating a truck. Mute that. Okay. One, two, let's record it. One, two, three, four, test, test, test. This is a hardware, um, the low latency monitoring recording with reverb now, enable reverb, enable send, test, 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 now don't have reverb, now do have reverb, 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 one, two, test, test, let's close everything and we'll have a listen, one, two, three, four, test, 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 this is a hardware, um, the low latency monitoring recording with reverb now, enable reverb, enable send, Test, 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 test. Now don't have reverb. Now do have reverb. So yeah, it works great. I think in both cases. One, two, three, four. Test, test, test. I think in both cases. Um, so that's the case. So both cases works fine. My, uh, I think because I have the Studio 192 with um, DSP um, hardware, low latency hardware acceleration, um, it's easier for me not to use that but I have so many people asking for this option, how to enable it. Um, so basically, um, from Studio One, um, you have the option either to um, control your block size, uh, make it lower, and then go to the options and raise the drop protection up to the maximum um, until you find the sweet spot that really like and really works for you. If you have VSTs or plugins, uh, enable these two options and then you take it from there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.